Are we living in a profoundly sick society and what does that actually mean? Hey everyone, Greg here and welcome back to the channel. I've been thinking a lot lately about how to navigate and thrive in what many people describe as a profoundly sick society without losing ourselves or our values. And I'm excited to dive into this topic today and even more eager to hear your thoughts. So please share your comments in the comment box below. But let's jump straight into it. Years ago, I came across this powerful quote from an Indian philosopher, Jiddu Krishnamurti. And he said, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. Now, this quote has stuck with me and I caught myself even quoting it the other day to emphasize the challenge of fitting into a world that is fundamentally flawed. Now, essentially, Krishna Morty is saying that if we conform to society's expectations, and just for an example, let's say securing high paying jobs, you know, having homes and cars, enjoying luxurious holidays, um, owning the latest fashion, having the latest gadgets, achieving financial freedom, then in a profoundly sick society, we are merely aligning ourselves with its inherent issues. In other words, we are the problem. Now, this conundrum has weighed on my mind. You know, how can we achieve what society values without uh, perpetuating its problems? You know, the idea of a profoundly sick society points to critical issues in modern civilization, such as inequality, um, environmental degradation, uh, social isolation, and the prioritization of material wealth over human well being. These concerns fuel my passion for climate justice. And if you missed my last vlog on this topic, then you can catch that through the link above or in the description box below. Anyhow, as a society, we are becoming more aware of inequality and injustices. Uh, economic disparity continues to grow with the wealth concentrated in the hands of the few while many live in poverty. Um, industrialization and consumerism have caused significant environmental damage contributing to climate change and loss of biodiversity. Technology and its advancements, while beneficial, have also led to increased social isolation, loneliness and mental health issues. And then there's the emphasis on materialism, which often overshadows the importance of community and relationships and personal fulfillment. So then, how do we live meaningfully in this uh, profoundly sick society without overly adjusting to its potentially harmful norms? Now, on reflection, I've noticed that my life has kind of evolved around this growing awareness as I've become more informed on societal issues. And I'm constantly striving to live in ways that stay true to my beliefs. However, last night I thought about the changes that I've made to align my life with my values, you know, whether they've been really made consciously or not. And I'd like to discuss four of these with you today. But on that note, I'm also considering making a more detailed video on this topic. So I would really love to hear your thoughts and any other additional suggestions you might have. So please do leave your comments in the comment box below. Now, the first change, I guess, is critical thinking and awareness. I truly, honestly believe that we must educate ourselves going beyond, you know, what we hear in the news media headlines to critically think and ask questions. I find I now do my own research and where possible consult with experts to understand broader contexts, uh, you know, helping me form a conscious opinion or understanding or choice even. And today, you know, we're so bombarded by information driven by algorithms that often reinforce misleading messages. And if there's one thing that psychology has shown is that without questioning, we start to believe repeated information. And maybe even more significantly, I've become a champion for questioning society's norms, especially those that sort of prioritize um, profit over people and the planet. Society's norms are so deeply ingrained in us, in us from an early age, making us think there are our own truths. And I have to remind myself that these societal norms, such as 
um, career paths or marriage or family or material success or consumerism or you know body image aging all of these are just constructs with specific purposes and I question their relevance to the world that we live in today to myself and my needs and who actually actually benefits from them which is usually the few I simply don't fully trust anything I hear and read until I've literally cross-examined it and I tell people, you know, don't trust me either. Don't simply take my word for it. Do your own research. Secondly, there's community building. I guess in one way or another, no matter where I've lived in the world, I've always been a part of our community. But nowadays, the need to connect locally and build strong, supportive relationships within my community has become a priority. You know, from something as simple as engaging with neighbors to supporting local uh, organizations, these connections create a sense of belonging and mutual support that is invaluable. And the other thing is building or joining supportive networks is, you know, I find equally important. Seeking out like-minded individuals and groups that share my values help me exchange experiences, um, hear new perspectives, and discuss solutions to shared concerns. Now, whether it's participating in community events or volunteering or simply having meaningful conversations, these networks really provide um, emotional support and they foster collaboration. And by actively uh, or being actively involved in my local community and connecting with supportive networks, I find um, strength and purpose and a deeper sense of connection to the world around me. Next is sustainable living and ethical consumption. You know, in a world of consumerism, I think we all have that pile of stuff hidden away in a cupboard or out in the shed, sort of out of sight, out of mind. And I found myself reverting back over these years to kind of my late teens and 20s when I was literally living out of a backpack for many years, embracing a minimalist lifestyle to reduce my reliance on material possessions. Nowadays, I try to have only what I truly need and prioritize experiences and relationship over things. Additionally, I'm focused on making um, environmentally conscious choices in my daily life wherever possible. And this includes probably the obvious things like, you know, reducing waste and recycling, um, conscious buying by supporting ethical brands and businesses that align with my values, and also by avoiding companies known uh, for their exploitive practices. And wherever possible, I try to buy local to support small business and reduce, you know, my carbon footprint. But I understand that we are not all financially equal and that make, and making these choices can be challenging. However, I believe it's important for us to do our best that we can do within our means. And by adopting a minimalist lifestyle and making mindful choices, we can contribute to a healthier planet while finding greater satisfaction in um, life's simple pleasures. And lastly, it's activism and advocacy. You know, by engaging in activism and advocacy for causes that I care about, I find purpose and fulfillment. You know, whether that's through volunteering or participating in protests or supporting relevant organizations, our voices and our critical opinions matter. And using my voice and even this YouTube platform to raise awareness about important issues and advocate for change gives me a deep, meaningful purpose. And following that is creative expression. You know, that's also a vital part of my artivism through art and, you know, even the whole production around making these videos, you know, from the script writing through to the editing. I process my emotions and share my views on society. And this creative outlet not only helps me understand and navigate my feelings, but also allows me to communicate complex ideas effectively. And by combining um, activism with creativity, I can inspire others. I can promote critical thinking and foster a community of like-minded individuals committed to making a positive impact. And this blend of advocacy and artistry empowers me to contribute to society or to societal change in a unique and personal way. But to wrap things up, Living in a society perceived as sick doesn't mean we need to resign to despair. And God only knows, I have said countless times, ignorance would be bliss. But instead, it involves making conscious choices that align with our values and, you know, fostering community and connection 
and working towards positive change in ways that are meaningful to us. So if you like today's vlog, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell for future updates. And again, please do leave your comments in the comment box below. I really love reading through everyone's comments and responding to as many people as possible. But until next time, it's bye for me from now.